Hi, Judy from Wedge Peace Craft. Welcome. Today's video is about my traveling yarn adventures in Edinburgh, what I bought in Edinburgh, Wick, which is north of Scotland, what I bought in Wick, my finished traveling project, and a couple of projects I finished this week. So I hope you stay tuned and enjoy the content. Let's get started. Well, from London, we went to Edinburgh. We shouted the sun in his flatmate a weekend in Edinburgh. And we were going for the Royal Military Tattoo. If you haven't heard about it, I'll put a link so you can check it out. It's not all marching bands. bands. It was amazing. It was truly, I don't know, emotionally amazing. And I would like to see it again in a different time slot. We had a lot of fun. We enjoyed Edinburgh with the sun. We um, did lots of sightseeing and checking things out. Of course, it was the Edinburgh Festival one of the biggest festivals in the world so there was lots of people which I'm not great in crowds the weather was great we had really great you know 25 26 balmy days one to two days there after the boys left I was a little chilly but no it was great weather and it was a lot of fun so the boys went back to London because um, Ronsky had to start work he's a teacher in the school year was starting and we stayed in Edinburgh a bit longer and then we're getting a hire car to wear. So after they left, I did yarn shopping. I didn't want to do it when my son was there because I wanted to spend as much time with him doing things together. And I had some yarn shops listed that I had learnt about on Ruth Loves to Knit, a podcaster. I'll put a link to her channel. She has some great videos and she'd mentioned these yarn shops in Edinburgh and I thought... I'd like to visit them. So there was Kathy's Knits and Ginger Twist and I left it to Thing to Google map them and get um, walkers there. Now Kathy's Knits is about 10 minutes from Waverley train station near the Royal Mile and that was the one he picked first and off we went there. Um, and it was nice. It's sort of you know the old English buildings where they have the basement down the steps. Her shop is down there. And she it's a nice little shop. And she had some wool and different things on display. I did check out her yarn. Um, and I made the mistake of asking about acrylic yarn. Because she apparently only stocks pure wool. So I had a look. And there was one little ball of yarn I bought for the colour. And this is it. Just this one little ball of yarn in this colour because I wanted that colour for a project. Now, it is Jamison and Smith Shetland wool. 100% wool from the Shetland Islands. It's called two-ply jumper weight and it is real Shetland wool. 115 metres, 125 yards, equivalent to four-ply thickness. And yeah, I thought it was a four-ply. She, the lady in the shop tried to sell me more thinking one 50 gram ball wasn't enough but I just wanted a bit of this colour and it's not that soft, it's quite coarse you would need an undergarment quite thick to stop this scratching unless of course it washes softer the other thing I bought, it caught my eye for the colour because in my mind I had, pl I had planned to do this four ply project in lots of different colors and I saw this Ta -da! I love these colors reminds me of the reef and it's West Yorkshire spinners I've never had yes uh, West Yorkshire spinner yarn before signature four ply reared sheared and spun in Britain 35% blue face Leicester sheep and it is 75% wool, 25% nylon, four ply in the colour, peacock. So I guess not everything in her shop is pure wool. But anyway, there was that. I went with the intention, I had the pattern, the cafe, Bev Cardigan with me, DK weight, looking for yarn, but didn't find anything I liked for that particular project. I did buy some other trinket stuff. Um, I bought a coaster, Kathy's Knits Edinburgh, wish you were here. I might send some of these away as a gift. I bought different ones. So I did spend a bit of money there and she did warm up after I started putting things on the counter I was going to buy. Um, 
what I did like about the shop on display was all this amigurumi of Alice in Wonderland characters and apparently it belonged to her brother. It was made in the 1960s and he put it on the sh in the shop for display. So that was Kathy's Knits. We had a pretty um, busy schedule that day so I planned to go to Ginger's Twist another day but silly me didn't check the opening hours and the next few days we were there it was closed so I never got to go to Ginger Twist. However I did catch up with the lady later in my yarn travels. So from there we picked up a hire car and went we're supposed to be going to Wick. Now when we picked up the hire car it was a Vauxhall and I do not like them. I do not think they're reliable and I probably jinxed us because the SUV we had 50 miles out of Edinburgh broke down. We're about to enter the motorway and it starts to chug like a train and the thing has to pull over into an emergency lane and it dies and on the dashboard it says engine needs urgent attention. So we were fortunate. The hire company were really embarrassed and had a car and sorted in two hours. We were upgraded to a much bigger SUV and, more, and a hybrid car that was awesome, a Hyundai. But it did put our schedule behind two hours because I don't like being on the road on dusk or after dark and I wanted to be in Wick before then. It was about four o'clock when we decided to have a late lunch in a, a, at a place called... Um, it was called the Avery. It was an amazing lunch, a lovely place, but Thing really needed a break from the driving. We rang the hotel in week to say we would be late. They offered to put food aside from the restaurant because it would be closed when we got there. But we did manage to get to week just on dusk. It wasn't quite dark, so I was quite pleased about that. We decided just to have a bit of takeaway and relax that night in the room. It was a lovely hotel. It had it, it made me smile because it had tartan carpets, tartan curtains, tartan covered furniture, but it was lovely. And there was this little chair in the corner, like an armchair to sit in, that I sat in to craft that night. This chair is amazing. I wanted it. It was so comfortable. The best crafting chair I have ever sat in. Things said you can't fit it in your luggage. It's got to stay here. I know the next morning I was crafting and because we were staying two nights and he said, we are going out for a look around the town. You are not crocheting all day in that chair. But it was amazing, this little chair. Anyway, we went for a wander around Wick, which was quite sad, really. It's a beautiful little town with a Viking history. But COVID, the GFC, have really taken its toll on this town. Lots of empty shops up the main street with lots of signs with other shops saying, please buy locally. It is a struggling little town in the north of Scotland. We did come across a craft shop, Wendy's Wool and Crafts, and that was just awesome. She was so lovely. I felt so comfortable in her shop lots of crafting supplies, a nice little range of walls and she was just so sweet. She had a map that she wanted you to pin where you're from and she had pins in it from all over the world. It was just great. Now I didn't spend a lot there because the range of walls wasn't what I was looking for for my cardigan but I did buy this one because I, I liked it and I was sticking with Bod Had a Palooza so I bought this flecky one which is called denim nep because I like the colour and the fleck and it is Life Decay by Stylecraft, an English brand and it was £3.80. Probably a little exy but after all it had to find its way to Wick but I did like it and it is lovely and soft. So that was for my bod habit palooza that was coming up. But there's also some little like general stores there that sell yarn and the one that came up for Bod Had a Palooza was the pumpkin beanie. I'll try and put a photo at the end to show you. And so I went out to buy orange yarn at one of the general stores and I found King Cole Big Value Chunky, this one. I bought two balls of it because I really like the colour and I didn't, I'm not a chunky yarn person but I didn't mind this one. Um, it cost me £2.99 and 
the colour is mango. Yeah, and I, when I used it for the pumpkin beanie, it worked up really well. I really quite enjoyed it. 100% premium acrylic, 167 yards, 152 metres. So I have a ball of that. I forgot the other thing I bought at Wendy's Crafts Place, because I did buy more than one ball of yarn. I bought two. The, the ball band is split. I have a thing, I really like bright red in baby yarns, if I can find them. And she had this one ball of baby four ply, woolly hippo in this red. It's beautiful and soft. And I bought that from her. It's 90% acrylic, 10% nylon and 110 metres. But yes, I do like bright red in baby yarns. Don't ask me why. I just do. And it will definitely go into a project. That was the other thing I bought at Wendy, Wendy's place. This was at a local, like, heart, like a department store. I also bought um, a flecky beige one for the second bod had a palooza that I used, which will be in the photo. And I used ninety percent of that yarn, and then the um, scraps went into a scrap project. So that was a wick. From there we checked out John O'Groats which my boss when he went was very rural and rustic and but now it's very modern and luxurious accommodation and lots of shops for tourists and we which is another um, stepping off point for the Orkneys we had to go to a different place to board the ferry and then we hopped on the ferry to go to the Orkneys which will be my next video and where I bought a lot more yarn finished objects well I had a traveling project that I could crochet on the um, plane I asked my subscribers and quite a few suggested this spike stitch baby blanket so I checked out Krista at the secret yarnery and I followed her tutorial which was pretty basic and I have finished the baby blanket I had to bring it home because I didn't take enough yarn to finish it and I have quite a bit of this yarn it's Lion Brand Ice Cream Yarn Big Scoop in the colour Lemon Meringue. Now, the actual pattern says it doesn't need a border, but I actually put borders down the side. I cannot make a blanket without even a little edging. So that is finished, and it's nice and soft. I haven't blocked it yet. I need to block it. And I do have, because I had two big balls, this amount left. And I thought the, the other day, I should make a little baby jacket and beanie out of this to go with it as a set and send it to a community much north of here that's always asking for donations of baby things. So maybe that's what I'll do with that and that yarn will be finished. And I've had that for quite a few years. I do have another traveling project, a knitted one. I have finished it. I just need to block it to show it at its best because I did use quite expensive yarn to do it so the other finished objects for this week sorry reaching around the camera getting up close um before i went away i had a whip for crochet for cancer they put a call out for more indigenous colored um, blankets and beanies and i had a blanket on the go and i finished it i'm showing you today because tomorrow i go to crochet for cancer meeting and it goes to a new home i will be donating it I'll also be catching up with my friend Ulia and having lunch and chatting girls chat. Um, she went to Austria. I did the other thing and I, you know, we want to catch up and have a chat and that's the best place. We both go to crochet for cancer and then stay for lunch. So this is made with Carnival 8 ply from a big store, department store. Um, it, it's just their standard acrylic yarn, but it is a good quality and it's lovely and soft. So I'll donate that tomorrow to Crochet for Cancer. And this week's bod had a palooza. Well, I've made the hat. And of course, it's Pink October. So I'm going to make it in pink. Now this head doesn't show it very well. So hopefully I'll take a picture at the end and show you. This is the Easy Crochet Beanie. All I did was different was I put a half double crochet edging on it. To give it a bit of a different look sort of sags on her 
bit big for her, a bit small for me. Now this was made with some leftover yarn. It's Red Heart Ombre. I'm not sure what the colour is. I think it's either coral pink or coral or something. But I've almost used all of that up. And that is using some scrap yarn. Shopping my stash for Bod Hat of Palooza and Pink October. Don't forget, I'm running a make-along for Pink October. There are some participant prizes. The only really hard and fast rule is that you use 75 grams of pink yarn, any shade of pink in your project. You can double dip like me and do the Bod Hat of Palooza, do a beanie in pink. You could do an amigurumi for amigurumi wars in pink. Or you could add 75 grams of pink to a current project. All you have to do Take a photo and post it with the hashtag PinkOctoberAU. My throat's getting dry. I'm talking too much. Okay, guys, that was my yarn adventures to Edinburgh and Wick and my finished objects. And next stop is the Orkneys. And boy, did I buy some yarn in the Orkneys. I really enjoyed it. And a lot of the yarn was because it was different and it was something I wanted to try. So I hope you stay tuned and watch the next video on my traveling yarn adventures in the Orkneys. To those new subscribers, welcome. I hope you enjoy the content. Make sure you tell your friends about the channel. I'd like to grow it a bit more before the end of the year. Thank you for watching. Stay safe, stay well, and don't forget, make October pink. Bye for now. <laughs>